Hi guys, it's Allie, and today we are going to be talking about something that you might have heard me talk a little bit about before if you tuned in to the Writers in Progress chats on Leah's channel back this past November, and that is Stephen King's On Writing. For those of you who don't know, Where in the World is Leah Jane has a monthly book club for writers where she brings on a bunch of different booktubers and author tubers to talk about any given topic for that month based on books that we've read or things that we have experienced in our own writing, so on and so forth. And the very first installment of this book club was this past November during NaNoWriMo, and so she tackled the huge behemoth of a genre that is writing practice books, aka books that try to help you write better. And so we each read our own book that we personally chose, and then we all read a group book, which was Stephen King's On Writing. If you tuned in to that live show, then you've already heard some of our thoughts and some of my thoughts on that book and what we liked about it, what we disliked about it, so on and so forth. But since reading that book and since that live show, I have had some of my opinions not change, but develop and grow a little bit. And I've noticed that some of the aspects of Stephen King's book have affected my writing both at the end of NaNoWriMo and now into December. So I thought it was only fair to make a video today to kind of go through the things that I have since reading on writing, that I have taken into my own writing and pulled in and taken in as my own with some minor adjustments. So without further ado, the very first thing that I have really noticed myself falling into since reading on writing is writing 2,000 words a day. Now, I don't write 2,000 words a day, and I don't do it the same way that Stephen King does. Stephen King says in his book that his writing process includes him waking up in the morning, getting ready for the day, and then he just goes and sits in his office at his writing desk, and he writes until he has 2,000 words, as long as that takes him. So it might take him a couple hours, it might take him almost the entire day, but he will not get up from his writing desk aside from like going to the bathroom or getting food or anything like that. He will sit there at that desk until he has 2,000 words. Now, I haven't been that crazy about it, but I have definitely tried to change my mindset in regards to my word count. I used to have a thousand words as my overall word count goal for any given day because it is something that is pretty accessible, it's something that I don't have to stress too much about, and in a lot of ways I think a thousand is a good number for me. Every number is going to be different for different people, and some people prefer not even to use numbers at all. So a thousand was my goal, but since reading the book by Stephen King, I have thought to myself, well, you know what, I get that, you know, Stephen King is Stephen King, so 2,000 words a day for him might mean something different for him than it does for me, but really what reason is there that I can't also get 2,000 words a day? This was also coming at a time where I was behind in NaNoWriMo, so I definitely needed the boost and the kick in the butt to get me to write more words a day because otherwise I wouldn't have succeeded in NaNoWriMo. So it was a good thing that I kind of had this thought to myself because I ended up switching my daily word count goal from 1,000 and doubling it all the way up to 2,000. And that did really help, even if only from a mindset standpoint. When my word count goal was only 1,000 words a day, I could get up to, say, 700 and then think to myself, well, that's almost my goal, so I'm just going to cut it there for the day because that's good enough. And that is true. Any amount of words you get in per day is good enough. You're still writing, you're still doing the thing that you're trying to do. But uh, when I doubled that word count goal to 2,000, I found myself easily succeeding in passing the 1,000 word count goal. So even though I don't always reach 2,000 words per day, though I did towards the end of NaNoWriMo, there was quite a few days where I even passed my 2,000 word count goal, but part of that was just from sheer terror of not wanting to fail NaNoWriMo. But even after NaNoWriMo, when I no longer have to plug my word count into any outside website other than my own brain, I still find myself getting consistently at least a thousand words a day, but usually a thousand words and anywhere between 300 to 500 words on top of that. So even if I'm not getting 2,000 words a day, which is my goal, I find that I am someone who 
works best when I set really high expectations for myself because I'm very forgiving of myself if I don't quite meet those expectations because I know that they are set so high. So when I had a thousand word count goal, I was letting myself slack off and do something that I was capable of doing more. But by adding on twice the amount of words in my daily word count goal, I was able to make that slacker phase into something that was still overall twice as successful or twice as productive as what I was doing before. So that's not exactly what Stephen King was implying when he was writing all of this stuff. He was definitely talking more so about having a consistent schedule, having a consistent space that you write in, and those are all great pieces of writing advice. However, that's not really the way that it manifested for me. Rather, it was just the sheer number value of 2,000 words a day. Is that accessible for me? Is that something that I can feasibly do? And I thought to myself, yes, I think I can feasibly do that. And then through the last week or so of NaNoWriMo and onward, I've proved to myself that yes, that is feasible for me. Now, it's not feasible for everybody. I am an overwriter, which means that it is very easy for me to write quickly and to write a lot, even if a lot of it is going to get cut later on in the writing process. So if you're an underwriter, this doesn't apply to you. But this is something that I did take from Stephen King's writing advice in his book, which is just to not sell yourself short, I guess, which is not at all what he was trying to say. He was trying to say, have a routine, but uh, this is what I took from it and it has helped me. So I wanted to share that with you first and foremost. The second thing that I took from reading Stephen King's book is that while adverbs are not as terrible as he makes them out to be, they are usually avoidable and they are truly sometimes overused. And this is a hard one for me to accept because I love me some adverbs. I'm a big fan of adverbs. I don't think that it's lazy writing. I think that we have the language and so we should use the language in whatever ways that we can to be the most effective in the story. And adverbs are a part of that. I love me a good adverb. However, I do agree that they can be a crutch for young and beginning writers who just don't really have a sense of how to craft the sentences to be the most efficient and brief that they can possibly be. It is something that I've noticed in my drafting because like I said, over writer, I will write as many words as I find necessary to get the picture in my head onto the page. And some of those things are going to be unnecessary. And that includes a lot of adverbs. So that is one thing that I have taken from Stephen King after reading on writing that has constantly come back into my head. Not that every time I go to write an adverb, I think to myself, what would Stephen King do? Because I don't do that. I write the way that I want to write. But I do think to myself, is this adverb necessary for the story and for the description that I'm trying to paint in my reader's minds? If it's necessary, I leave it and continue going. If it's not necessary, then I at least think to myself, maybe this is something that is gonna come out in edits, and maybe it's something that I ought not even put there in the first place. So it's good to be aware. You can never be too aware of your writing. I think it's good to know what the general consensus is around certain forms of writing and certain types and certain styles, and use what works for you and be aware of the readership of that style. So. I don't think that I'm going to be doing Stephen King any favors with my adverbs, but I also think that uh, it's good to keep it in mind what things you are putting into your story and why you're putting them there because you have to have a reason for every word you put into your story. Following on that, the third and final, at least as far as this video is concerned, thing that I have taken from Stephen King's book is that grammar is important, even if you wish it wasn't. <laughs> you need to know the grammar behind the rule that you're about to break. You can't break a rule unintentionally and have it be as effective as if you did break it intentionally. So a perfect example of this is passive voice. Passive voice is one of those things that every professor writing and just regular English professor out there will tell you is that passive voice is the worst thing in the English language. It's absolutely terrible. It's horrible, whatever, which first of all, like, Writers are so dramatic. Anyway, passive voice can be really helpful in a story if you have a very specific reason for putting it there. Passive voice, the reason that a lot of writers call it absolutely terrible is because it creates distance between your reader and the subject of the sentence. So if you say that something happened to somebody, then it creates a layer of distance. It creates a 
sense of helplessness, like the character, like the subject that is being discussed in the sentence or in the paragraph or whatever, is unable to help themselves. And so if that's what you're going for, that's actually a great use of the passive voice. If you have a character who is in a situation that they're helpless in, or if you have a character who is starting to feel distanced or dazed or stepping away from themselves in any way, then using passive voice might be a good way to express that subtly to your readers. And so in that case, it's great, but you only knew that you were doing that because you knew what passive voice was and you knew what passive voice did to a sentence and to a situation. If you just use passive voice because you don't know the difference between passive and active voice, then you're not using it purposefully. And so you can use it incorrectly at any given time without knowing. So that is one thing that I firmly agree with, and maybe it's just the teachery side of me coming out, but grammar is important. You have to know the grammar, you have to know the rules before you can break the rules. It's necessary, it's a necessary evil, and you have to kind of put up with it if you want to write compelling stories. And that's just the tea on that. Now, this is something that I have always believed in. And even when I was writing in high school and in college, when all of these professors were telling me all of the things that were wrong with my writing and all of the grammatical things that I was doing wrong, I still felt compelled to listen to them, even though a lot of the things that they said, I think they put in the wrong way because it was never coming from a place of you need to know the rule to break it. It was always coming from a place of you need to know the rule so you can do it precisely perfect and otherwise you fail at everything. So even when I was experiencing those things, even if I didn't fully agree, I did at least partially agree with them. And after leaving college and just writing on my own and writing with other people and being on this kind of online space of writers, we are a much more loosey-goosey crowd, I guess. There is not a lot of people out there hardcore telling you you need to be good at grammar and uh, it's a lot more on that artsy creative side of things which is still great and still valid but it wasn't until reading Stephen King's book that I was kind of reminded of all of these things that my professors used to say and the things that I actually agreed with when it came to grammar and structure and things like that. As much as grammar kind of sucks it's also kind of fun for me because I'm a linguistic nerd so I was really happy to go back and think about those things because I do think that knowing your grammar makes you a better writer whether or not you use it exactly as intended. So that is the third thing that I've kind of taken from Stephen King's book, even if I already kind of knew it, but it was a good reminder. So those are the three things that I took from reading Stephen King's On Writing. Now, there are plenty more things that Stephen King talks about in this book, but they're either things that, one, I already talked about in the Writers in Progress chats, Two, they're something that I disagreed with then and still disagree with, or they're things that I always agreed with then and still agree with now. So these are just the three things that have changed my perspective on writing, or at least have reminded me of something that I had kind of forgotten in regards to writing that I've really noticed myself constantly coming back to in the past few weeks since I read this book. Since I did you know, talk about this book once before in that Writers in Progress chats, I wanted to come back and share with you the things that have changed in one way or another since I read and spoke about that book before. So I hope that this video has been helpful, or at least that it's been entertaining or something akin to that. And I am going to go ahead and leave that here. So if you like this video, give it a like. And if you like my content, do subscribe. I make videos every Wednesday and Friday-ish. And I will see you guys in the next one. Yeah. The boomers have rights. <laughs>